I wasn't a quiet kid, but I was quite introverted. I think I always had an interest in connecting with something that was non-verbal and the fact you could have a relationship with an animal that was quite intimate and interesting but you didn't have to talk or shout or be loud. As a kid I sort of was obsessed with the books that my great aunt and uncle had picked up on their travels and one was of Egyptian art and it had those tipped in plates that you could lift up and just the smell of the pages and the images and the god Anubis particularly entranced me in that idea that when a body was mummified that the person overseeing the funerary rites would dress up in a costume of Anubis and sort of see off the dead and all that kind of thing. As a kid, like I really loved B-grade movies and you know old horror, and then followed that through to more modern horror films. And I think that idea of the Frankenstein, that idea of putting parts together, always fascinated me, and that something could be revived and brought to life. And in a way, that sort of feeds into my work. That idea of creating a character that perhaps couldn't exist or wouldn't exist, but within my work, I can make it real and create any sort of world I like. And I find that the, a great thing about being an artist is there's no limitations on how you can represent the world. And that's sort of what I like investigating in my work. The reason I love printmaking is the process. I always at university admired expressionistic painters and thought that idea of really releasing creative energy was really exciting but I very soon came to realise that was not me and to make your art work you had to follow your natural inclinations. So being a person that likes being organised and very much planning what I want to do. I found that I liked the idea of having to make a block or plate then see it come out and be transformed and the image in a way be revitalised and that captures my imagination and it's something that just I think I find continually engaging. My work is figurative at its essence. It's always the figure that engages me. Something I think that comes from my love of photography and the idea of the portrait or documentary photography. It's driven by an interest in humans, I guess, and people and their animals as well. So I guess with my figures I'm taking inspiration from things I see, an expression, a person, an animal, a posture, a particular type of tattoo and then that starts to generate a story in my mind and then I blend imaginative elements with perhaps that source material to come up with something that I think is sort of convincing, you know, it could exist but at the same time is completely fantasy. I like the idea of the domestic animal and the fact that animals really are wild but become domesticated by us and are kind of willing to live alongside us in a symbiotic sort of relationship. And I'm interested in the idea of the edge that the domestic animal has. So a little bit like people, while things are going well, everything's calm and everyone gets on well. But if something arcs them up or they don't like something, they'll show a little bit more of that wild side. And I like that duality. I'm really interested in the idea of telling a story through the body and using the figure as a device for narrative. I like the idea of the tattoo because it can tell a story or give uh, information about affiliations or proclivities or where someone's come from or what they're associated with, what they like, the animal tattoo as a totem or a talisman, those kind of things. And I think it's interesting to think about the skin as a vehicle for telling a story because it's also something that we can conceal or reveal depending on the situation and I like that idea of the dual nature of that that we can share or not share information about ourselves through our skin, through our appearance, through our posture, those kind of things. Often I will have a human model that I will then transform into an animal type creature or vice versa and take an animal and give it a sort of human alter ego. 
It is very much for me about ideas of transformation and also escapism, you know, the fact that we're sort of stuck in the skin we're in, but we can use that and transform it to become something slightly different. I think I'm pretty lucky that I'm never short of ideas. I almost have too many, so I sort of have to edit down what's the most important thing to pursue in a way. But I think at the crux of what I'm interested in, it's always a character. Coming up, I guess, with an idea about what sort of character I want to make an image of and then in my own head creating a little backstory for that and then conveying a sense of that through the finished picture but also a lot of it will sort of be hidden and secret to me which I kind of like about my ideas. The way I generate my ideas is a little bit like making a collage that the sources are really eclectic so it might be something I hear, something I see, something I jot down, an image I collect, a postcard, a photograph I take, something I've read in a book that inspires me and sort of amalgamating all that together in a way to come up with a succinct final image. So a lot of my notebooks just contain jottings and keywords, ideas for titles for prints. Often I'll have a title or a name of a character and then I sort of generate the character around that. I think it ties into, as a teenager, I really loved reading and I think that was a great escape for me. It sort of was a way to take me to other worlds to meet interesting people, as a little bit romantic. So words are really important to the development of my ideas. It might be that I have a particular animal in mind and I think is that character an introvert or extrovert? Is it someone who likes the outdoors, the indoors? What would they get up to? What sort of personality they have? And then trying to convey that through the posture, the drawing, finding source material, whether it's photos I take myself or looking on the internet for reference material, photographing friends and animals, bringing that all together. I also sketch, like I always uh, create an image from a drawing, whether it be a print or a painting or whatever the medium's going to be, I always do a sketch first that lets me know where I'm going. I'm not the type of person that can leave things to chance. I really like knowing what the end result is and where I'm going. So a lot of the exploration comes in the collecting of source material and the sketching process and by the time I sort of come to making a print or painting it's very much about seeing that vision through in a technical way and that's not to say there's no fun in that because I really love the technical development of an image as well and the making of it and the process of um, producing a final picture. studied at uni I became absorbed in lithography and I loved the surface of the stone and working with the greasy materials and the kind of chemical process that you had to go through to get a final image but once I left uni I started working in group workshops so the Australian print workshop was somewhere that I worked in Fitzroy then sort of having to work got in the way you couldn't drag a stone home from the workshop and then bring it back in so I thought back to studying and I had really liked relief printing so liner cut was something I started to work a lot with as it was easy to cart around work with out of a home studio take to a workshop where I had access to a printing press and be able to make work more rapidly and not be bogged down by not having lithostones or a press of my own. I've also worked with mediums like screen print and monotype as well, which I really enjoy. I suppose my love of liner cut really comes from the reductive process and I keep coming back to it. I sort of like the sculptural feeling of cutting the block and the meditative process of cutting into the lino and then an image forming. And I also like the idea that people associate lino cut almost with the kid's art form. And I think a lot of people made them at school and they can kind of connect with the process. And I like the idea of elevating the lino cut to being something more sophisticated and very much embodies fine art. I think 
Printmakers by nature are quite generous, like they're quite interested in sharing technique, seeing what other people are doing, not necessarily collaborating, but in a sense being in a communal environment, giving tips about, okay, what ink have I been using, what paper works for this process, etc. I think that helped me extend into teaching as well, so I taught at TAFE for 12 years and that was sort of drawing, printmaking, painting, that sort of thing. I think it's really interesting when you do have a technical skill to be able to talk about that and share it with other people and help people realise their own ideas as well. Up until a few years ago I'd always had a studio at home and then it was exciting to have the opportunity to have the studio away from home and come to the Abbotsford Convent. And given the space that I can now work in is so large, it's also enabled me to run printmaking and drawing workshops in the studio. So it's been sort of fun having keen people come in and spend time you know, on a weekend to develop their own skills and interest in art. Offering those workshops is a really nice way to correlate what I do to make a bit of bread and butter money and add that onto my practice and it's really great at the end of a workshop day to see people really excited about what they've managed to make in such a limited time and sort of go home having had a little creative outburst and meet other people that are like-minded and share a day with sort of some comrades in art. I think it's really important as an artist to think about diverse streams of income and having a gallery represent you does take a level of administrative work off you which is really good and they can liaise with clientele, deal with sales for you, price the work which I hate doing so having your work priced by a gallery is a really exciting thing. So I have work um, at Australian Galleries in Melbourne and Sydney and I also have some work at Beaver Gallery in Canberra and at Solander Gallery in Wellington and I found exhibiting there just opens up new doors in regards to audience and you know an appreciation for your work which really I think is what an artist wants you know you I don't make work to hide it under the bed you know I really want it out there I find that having a few galleries on the go and having relationships with those galleries is a really exciting part of my practice all the galleries that show my work I really like the people that run them and I have full faith that they'll represent my work to the best that they can. I've been showing at Australian galleries in Melbourne and Sydney for a few years now. They've been my representative gallery and I just had a show recently at the Derby Street Gallery. It was quite an ambitious show because I had been booked into their smaller space and then got moved into the bigger space so it was quite exciting to have work in the main gallery and it was really nice to be able to bring together my paintings, prints and drawings and it was nice for all the work to be received equally well. I was really excited that I sold pieces in all mediums which was a really nice validation of where I'm going with my process and what I want to do with my practice which I guess is having a broad approach to how I work in regards to letting the idea tell me what medium it wants to be represented in best. I think there is a big challenge in stepping out of your personal space into a public space and I think to be an exhibiting artist you have to have a really thick skin and not everyone does and I think that's often why people might retreat a little bit from exhibiting or not wanting to show their work or share it too much with people. Being an artist you're not necessarily a hugely social animal and then when you're at an exhibition and people are giving you feedback often you just take it on the chin but I know a lot of artists are very sensitive to it and I think I have an ability to detach from people's thoughts about my work, even positive or negative, because I think it's really important to put your work out there and then allow an audience to have their own response to it and not be too, this is what you've got to think, this is what it's about, this is what it means. And 
I think confidence in your work comes with time and having a faith in your vision and a strong vision that no one can take you away from is really important. And even when you doubt it, to not let other people know that you doubt it, to just stick to your guns, go down the road you want to go down. And then when you present that work publicly, you've got full faith in it and you know you're happy with it and then leave everyone else to their own devices in regards to what they think and let them have their opinions. Currently I've curated a show called Monstrous where I asked 13 artists to respond to that theme in print form and we all work to a standard paper size but basically you could make whatever kind of image you wanted so whether it be digital, lino cut, lithograph, whatever medium they wanted to work in they could and it was really lovely to see within that small number of artists how diverse the response was to that theme and I think when I think of myself as curating a project it's very much with a small c I don't see myself as a you know curator with a big c so being an artist myself it's more about um, asking people to jump on board and become part of a project and sort of letting them do what they want. So bringing together emerging and established practitioners and I think it's really helpful often for someone beginning their career to be able to interact or even be mentored to some degree by someone more established to get to know the ropes and kind of be given a chance to be in I guess a show where there's a few sort of names or known people and they get an opportunity then to network or meet these people and sort of interact with them, learn a little bit about what they do. I think group shows for me are a really nice way of bringing together diverse or disparate people that might not normally connect. One of the challenges of being an artist and wanting to spend most of your time making your work, which is the fun part, uh, the challenge is to recognise the business aspect of being an artist. You know, one of my aspirations obviously was to make a living as an artist which is what I finally do now after many years of having other jobs but I think one of the things that enable me to become a full-time artist is realising that you have to promote your work and you have to find new audiences for your work so part of that is online presence and marketing yourself in that way so I think a key thing is having a website. A lot of artists sort of go, oh, website, I can't be bothered, or originally people thought that was a bit tacky or that kind of thing, but the way that I went about having a website was looking at it almost as an archive of my work for myself as well. And then from that, you know, you develop sharing news with people. You can have a contact page where people can join a mailing list so that you're growing an audience and that kind of thing. And I think um, it's also a good way to be contactable because part of my practice is doing commissions for people and they'll often have a pet that they want a sort of human animal alter ego made of. So I think being accessible in that way is not a bad thing for developing your ability to make a living from your work. And then in conjunction with that, once I had a website up and running, I started to think about other possibilities of having an online presence. So that began in the form of a blog, which I think is a way to connect with a certain part of your audience and also to be able to share works in progress, shots of your studio. People really love the magic of the studio and they sort of can't get enough of it. So if you're willing to share your working process and images of you working and your day-to-day activities people actually really respond well to that and they sort of love getting an insight into your practice in that way. Uh, another facet is I always say I do Facebook because I do see it as kind of a job in a sense so I have an artist page on Facebook that I actively use and update every day. The challenge of that is not always it being about you so for me using Facebook is a way to connect with a different audience and develop I guess a fan base in a certain way so with my work being about animals I share little cute animal pictures, artist quotes, images of other artists work that I like 
like, links to interesting art-based articles I read, images of my own work, I run little giveaways where I might give away some of badges that I make and that kind of thing. So I think with Facebook it's about creating a buzz and getting people interested then to coming to your events so you can advertise an exhibition and sort of let them know that you've got an event on that they'll sort of have fun at. I think it's important to have a big ambition and perhaps your technical ability doesn't quite meet that challenge and that's I think the way that you push yourself further is to have a really ambitious idea and just do the best you can to get there. I think often you surprise yourself that you have pulled off something that wasn't exactly what you thought it would be but comes close which is always a nice feeling when you sort of think oh how did I do that I'm really pleased I pulled that off. One of the things I think that keeps a practice invigorated or challenging is that you are constantly trying different things or using different materials and techniques. And I think the balance of working in different mediums is really helpful to your development because you have constant struggles and challenges, problems that you have to overcome. And I think I often see the artist as that, a problem solver, so you're constantly setting yourself a problem or posing a question that you have to answer or challenge yourself to be able to resolve and that's one of the things I think that keeps you interested in an artistic practice is that constantly small changes to others but large changes to you and that idea of never being satisfied. I think it's Philip Guston who said frustration is everything, satisfaction's nothing and that idea of constantly saying I can do it better, you know I'm going to improve next time um, if I did it again, this is what I'd do differently. And that to me is the exciting thing about being an artist, that constant challenge.